Now, Creighton Braden Snyder back at Platte Valley High School. We're just about ready to start the second half. I did, and I just caught, got a chance to talk to the Mustang coaching staff, and I asked them how they plan to stop Caitlin Smith, and they said they're just going to keep moving their feet on defense, and they need to be patient on offense and wait for their shots. The Grizzlies have the arrow to start the second half. They lead it 20-15. to 15. They'll be going left to right as we watch things here across from the uh, benches. The Mustangs are the home team tonight wearing their white uniforms. The Grizzlies in dark blue. They're the visiting team. And uh, the Grizzlies tried to pass it in. Uh, Sarah Gilbert, and it's swatted away by Allie Schneider's foot, which is an automatic violation when you stick it out like that. So the Grizzlies will throw it in under their own basket, have a little bit of trouble getting it in. Lexi Girk has it from the three-point line, up and way short. Ball on the floor, fought four, and a foul. I think that's going to be called on the Grizzlies from behind. Kaylin Smith, that would be nice for the Mustangs if they could get a few fouls on her because she's been the uh, main offensive weapon. That's her second personal. And the Grizzlies are going to press here in the second half as they did several times in the first half. The Mustangs break the pressure fairly easily. Schneider almost traveled, and she pulls up to dribble outside on the left side of the arc. Now up high is Bills. Bills a couple of dribbles, and she's fouled as she tries to penetrate the paint. So two quick fouls on the Grizzlies. That one was on Lexi Girk, her first. So the Mustangs will throw it in under their own basket. It'll be Sammy Pettyjohn who's back in with three personal fouls. Under the basket, has the ball above her head, looking, has a little trouble finding somebody. Finds Schneider, top of the key, right side to Bills. Bills back to Schneider. Now it's Danielle Gross on the left side. Alexis Bills gets it inside to Schneider from 10 feet, bouncing around, and that one finds its way down. Finally, her shots, have some of them have gone in and come out. And now that first bucket of the half cuts the lead to three. So the Mustangs right in the thick of things here, trailing just 20 to 17. The Mustangs matching up man-to-man, and the Grizzlies patiently working the outside. Now they throw it down low to Smith. Smith forces a shot off the bottom of the rim. The rebound picked up off the floor by Danielle Gross. Schneider has it on the right wing, drives the paint herself, has it swatted away from behind, and a quick foul by Kaylin Smith. That's her third. There was a groan from the uh, Grizzly bench. That's kind of a tough call, and but an important call in this game is that's the third on Smith as she gets two in the first 90 seconds here of the third quarter. That's what you and I were just talking about, seeing if we could get her in a little bit of foul trouble. <laughs> and there it happened. Schneider, a three-pointer from the right wing, just grazes the far side of the rim and goes on out of bounds. So the Grizzlies will throw it in from the far baseline. They have a three-point lead now. This is the closest the Mustangs have been since they had an early lead. 6.15 to go here in the third quarter at Platte Valley High School. On the right side is Gilbert. Up high is Girk. Uh, now Carey at the top of the key, right side Gilbert. Gilbert fakes one way, goes by Schneider, and is fouled. Let's see if it's going to be Schneider or Gross that gets called for that foul. They were both there. And it's Schneider, her second. But it wasn't on the shot, so it will be a throw in from underneath. First foul of the second half on the Mustangs. They trail it by three. Right side, three-point attempt off the... Back of the rim is no good by Amanda Carey. Rebound, Schneider down the floor, ahead to uh, to Bills, who from the left side takes a right-handed shot. That was pretty. And now the Mustangs are within one, 20 to 19. Now it looks like the uh, a little pickup in their step by the Mustangs as the defense is just a little bit closer. Smith with a follow-up and a foul on... Let's see, is that Wiederspan got called for that foul? That's her second in my book. That's what the scoreboard says. And Smith will be at the free throw line where she continues to be perfect. She is six for six from the line. Sammy Pettyjohn checks out. Ashley Apple comes back in. 
her first minutes of the second half. And that free throw climbs over the front of the rim, and she stays perfect from the line and extends the Grizzly lead back to three, 22 to 19. To Fort Morgan with 5.20 to go here in the third quarter. Ball on the floor, turnover, and the Mustangs, or the Grizzlies, lose it to a turnover. Lexi Girk picked up the ball off the floor, started a dribble, and then pinned it actually against her shoulder and traveled with it. That was a very late As, call. Well, the official that was closest to it didn't call it, so the official further away, that's why his whistle was late. Mustangs will throw it in under their own basket. Weider span on the left wing. Now Schneider swings it around to Bills. Bills on the right side, swings it to Gross. Gross takes a couple dribbles, tries to get it to Ashley Apple, who loses the handle. Turnover back to the Grizzlies. Grizzlies two-on-two break. The nice move, kind of a dipsy do by Amanda Carey. Her first bucket of the second half extends the lead to five, 24 to 19. Northridge leading Fort Morgan, almost to travel by Daniel Gross. Now Schneider has it, picks up her dribble top of the key, and Ashley Apple turns and is fouled by Sarah Gilbert. Gilbert wound up on the floor. She kind of got the worst end of that deal, and it's the fourth team foul on the Grizzlies, her third personal foul. Ball knocked out of bounds. And it's actually off the Mustang, so another turnover. That was just a lack of concentration by the Mustangs and a lack of communication. 4.35 to go here in the quarter, the third quarter, 24-19 to 19 Grizzlies. Mustangs picking up the defensive intensity just a little bit. They're still uh, fairly loose on that three-point line and trying to cut off those penetrations. Wide open shots in the left side of the free throw line by Girk. No good, and the ball tied up on the rebound. The arrow favors the Mustangs. Fort Morgan trailing by five. They were briefly within one. And now a couple of uh, free throws in a bucket for the Grizzlies. Extend that lead back to five. Wiederspan checks out. Petty John is... Back in. She has three personal fouls. Mustangs working against full court pressure. Break it easily. Teddy John across the timeline into the paint. Schneider from the three-point line on the right side misses everything. Ashley Apple swats it back inbound. Saves it to Bills. Schneider back to Bills. She loses the handle. Stolen away by Gilbert. who dribbles the length of the floor left-handed. Pulls up from six feet out. Off the back of the room. No good. And Allie Schneider swats it away. It looked like a good foul, but you heard a lot of skin there, so the uh, official had to call a foul, I think, and Amanda Carey will go to the free throw line. What do you think, Braden? I agree 100% with that call. It's a good call. Yeah. That Schneider thought maybe she had it, but when you can hear it here up in the top row, that's probably going to be a foul. So the first free throw is good. That was uh, the second personal on Allie. Uh, Schneider, well, actually the third. Yeah, that is the third. They just got it on the board late. So Carey's first free throw is good. That extends the lead to six. And the second free throw is on the way and a violation. It didn't make it, but the violation wiped it off anyway. One of her teammates stepped in early. So the Mustangs will throw it in under the uh, Grizzly basket, full court pressure. Again, they break it fairly easily. Uh, Teddy John gets it across the timeline, but it's swatted away from behind. A Grizzly picks it up and goes down. She's fouled. The Grizzly numbers are hard to pick up. They're dark blue uniforms with dark red numbers. And that foul is on Sammy Petty John, who just checked back in. And now she has four personal fouls with that one and has to sit down again. So Daniel Gross comes back in. The Mustangs trailing by six with 3.45 to go in the third quarter. A little bit of foul trouble there for the Mustangs. Stolen away in the paint by Ashley Apple. She just uh, reached up and took a cross-court pass. Not a very well-advised pass by the Grizzlies. Let's see if the Mustangs can take advantage. They find themselves trailing by six after pulling to within one. Ashley Apple is called for traveling. She tried to forced it along the uh, right side of the lane, 
and shuffled her feet as the ball was pinned up against the defender. That was the man to carry. So the Grizzlies bring it back the other direction. Fort Morgan picking up in the front court, working the perimeter with 3.10 to go here in the third quarter. The Grizzlies with a six-point lead. Left side to Girk. Girk drives the left baseline. Shot is no good. Ball is on the floor, being fought for. Still a scramble. And just kind of a preventive jump ball. Nobody really had it, but the officials call a tie-up, and the arrow favors the dark blue jerseys. The Grizzlies will throw it in from the near sideline. And that's just another example. That should have been a Mustang ball the minute that ball went off the backboard and off the rim. Nobody boxed out. So, yeah, very few offensive rebounds, but um, the Grizzlies have got very few putbacks. They had zero field goals in the second quarter, only one field goal here in the third quarter. They lead it by six, 25 to 19, 2.45 to go here in the third quarter. The Mustangs have a couple of buckets. They trailed by five at halftime. Three-point attempt from the corner, no good. That by Smith. The Mustangs get the rebound, but quickly turn it over. So the Grizzlies reset their offense with two and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. Mustangs haven't really been able to get an offense set up here in the quarter, but they do have a couple of buckets. But we are six minutes into this third quarter. The Grizzlies working the perimeter, trying to look for an opportunity to penetrate, but the Mustangs doing a fairly good job of uh, putting on defensive pressure, but overall really kind of a lackluster pace to this ball game. Not a lot of intensity to it. Now the left baseline turnaround is no good by Nybauer. Mustangs with the rebound. Ahead to uh, Daniel Gross. Check that. That's uh, Brittany Winsheimer. Now Alexis Bills from the free throw line. An awkward off-balance shot. Doesn't hit anything. Goes out of bounds, but... Lucky for the Mustangs, it was touched by a Grizzly on the way out of bounds. Weirstrand had a good hustle there and got it off of Caitlin Smith right as she was. they were both fighting for possession out of bounds. So this on a neutral floor at Platte Valley High School, so the crowd is fairly slim and fairly quiet. So the, uh, the players need to bring their own intensity to this ball game. Schneider from just inside the arc. Is good for two from near the left baseline. So maybe Allie Schneider can heat things up a little bit with that. That's her second field goal of the quarter and uh, cuts the lead now back to six, 27 to 21, a minute 15 left to go here in the quarter. If the uh, Mustangs could get another bucket or two before the buzzer sounds, they're going to be obliged with a turnover uh, traveling on the Grizzlies. Um, Go ahead. That's their eighth turnover of the, this half. They had ten in the first half alone. This is their eighth in the third quarter. Snyder, quarters. baseball pass down to Winchheimer and has it knocked away from behind out of bounds. So the Mustangs will retain possession with a minute four left to go here in the quarter. Mustangs pulled briefly to within one, and now they trail by four after that Schneider basket. In the paint to Schneider on the throw in, and she's going to get to go to the free throw line. Danielle Gross threw it into Schneider, who was just inside the paint, just below the free throw line. She tried to shoot, but she was fouled, and that is the fourth personal foul on um, on Sarah Gilbert for the Grizzlies. So both teams have a co- uh, have a player with four personal fouls, and Gilbert will leave after the first free throw by Schneider, which is no good. Schneider has struggled from the line tonight. She is one for five. She has another one yet to come. And it is up, and it's good. So that trims the lead to three with a minute left to go here in the quarter. See if the Mustangs can get a stop and cut this lead down or maybe even tie it up before the quarter ends. They're picking up the intensity just a little bit on that man-to-man defense. Winsheimer guarding closely out at the three-point line against um, Carey. Now Smith up high. She's back in the game after sitting out for a few minutes. Dion on the right side and a foul away from the ball on the Mustang. Not sure who that's on. Did you see that, Braden? It looks like they're going to call it on Allie Schneider, but I'm not sure. 
Now they put Brittany Winsheimer's number up on the board. That's her third personal foul. Pass in. Oh, a lot of skin on that one. As the uh, throw-in went into the lane to Smith, she went up. And you could hear the slap up here. And that is going to be the first personal foul on Danielle Gross. That's just a height advantage issue. Yeah. Yeah. And Smith, who's been excellent from the free throw line, in fact, perfect, just missed her first free throw of the game. So the lead remains 25-22. She had hit seven in a row before missing that one. And the next one is good. And it's a good thing for the Grizzlies, anyway, that they're hitting for the free-throw line because they've got very few field goals. The Mustangs almost turn it over. Schneider from three on the left side. Swish! And that pulls the Mustangs to within one. Allie Schneider has heated up here in the last part of the third quarter, and it's 26-25. The Mustangs are as close as they've been. They've been within one one other time here in this quarter, 26-25, to 25, 12 seconds to go in the quarter. The Grizzlies looking for one last shot. Nine seconds. Smith all alone from the right side. Swish from 12 feet out. Can't leave her alone like that. And it's 28-25. As time expires, a shot at the buzzer. High off the glass by Schneider, and it's no good. So the Mustangs trim that lead ever so slightly. They're within three. 28-25 with a quarter left to go here from Platte Valley High School. It's the Northridge Grizzlies over the Fort Morgan Mustangs. 28 to 25. Back after this on B106. Alec Creighton and Braden Schneider back at Platte Valley High School ready for the fourth and final quarter. May not be the fourth and final period, but there was overtime last night as the uh, the Mustangs beat Platte Valley last night, and they're within three of Northridge tonight. The winner of this ball game faces the Eaton uh, girls in the championship game tomorrow evening here at Platte Valley High School. Fort Morgan has the first possession of the fourth quarter. Again, they're going right to left as we watch things here across from the uh, the benches on the far side of the floor. Schneider, three-pointer from the left side. Off the rim, no good. Rebound, fought for. It was initially rebounded by Girk of the Mustangs. Or I checked that. That's Carey. And she was quickly tied up. So the uh, Grizzlies will have to use the possession arrow to get that ball back. So we'll keep an eye on that possession arrow in a close game. That could uh, could have an impact as we head toward the final minutes of this game. Seven and a half minutes to go in regulation. Mustangs playing a man-to-man the entire night tonight. And the Grizzlies working the perimeter. Smith he had overthrows her teammate Dion, and it's swatted out of bounds by a Mustang. I think Winsheimer hit that out of bounds. So Northridge will throw it in under their own basket. Right baseline. Ball is on the floor. Who's going to get it? Mustangs pick it up. That is Shuki. is back in the lineup. She picks it up, and now the Mustangs going to try to cut that lead again. Gross from, I should say, uh, Bills from the right side, off the back of the rim, and again, no offensive rebound for the Mustangs. They're just not even boxing out anymore. They're turning around and getting ready to go play defense. The problem is they're not boxing out, boxing out on defense, and that could be play a big part in the possession arrow. And the three-point attempt by Smith is no good. Follow-up by Girk is no good, and Schneider picks the rebound up off the floor. She's going to dribble one-on-one against Girk across the timeline. Now pressure is pulled off, and the Mustangs will set up their offense, trailing by three with six and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Bills, left side, cross court to Schneider. She's driving the right baseline, up and swish. So Allie Schneider with 10 points here in the second half pulls the Mustangs back to within a point. 6-10 left to go in the ballgame. Smith thinks about a three-pointer. Now picks up her dribble. Can't find a teammate. Does now. That's Shelby Clark. Now Smith on the right side. She's had the, uh, the hot hand for the... Grizzlies tonight, mostly from the free throw line. Now Dion swings it right side to Clark, up to Girk, and Smith, a long three-pointer, and she is true on that one. So Kaylin Smith, with her second tray of the night, extends that lead back to four for the Grizzlies. Mustangs quickly down the floor. Schneider across the timeline, off to Bills. Bills pulls up from 15. Good! 
Now the intensity of this ball game is picking up on both ends of the floor. And uh, Alexis Bills shot pulls the Mustangs back to within two. 31-29. 5.18 to go here in the fourth quarter. The Mustangs chasing on offense as uh, the Grizzlies running a cutting offense this time. And the ball picked up off the floor by Bills. Bills to Schneider. He dribbles it across the timeline. Five minutes exactly to go in the ball game. Fort Morgan could tie or go ahead here with a three. They're trailing 31 to 29. Schneider swings it left side to Petty John. Petty John's back in with four personal fouls. Winsheimer to Bills and a three second in the lane. Brittany Winsheimer got trapped in there after she passed it and just didn't get out. Turnover, Mustangs. Let's see, Wiederspan and Gross check back in for the Mustangs. Winsheimer and Shooky sit down next to Coach Jim Kreckemeyer. 440 left to go in the ballgame. Smith dribbling by herself on the right side. Up high to Clark. Now back to Smith. Thinks about another long three-pointer. She just hit one a minute ago, but Schneider picks her up. Now a three-point attempt off the glass by Carey. Doesn't find any rim, and the Mustangs get a defensive rebound. 420 to go in the ball game, and timeout called by the Mustangs. Coach Kreckemeyer wants a full timeout with 419 left to go in the ball game. Mustangs trailing Northridge by 2, 31-29 on Morgan County's B106. B106.com. Back at Platte Valley High School, Fort Morgan trails Northridge by two in the girls' Northern Colorado Round Ball Classic. This is the semifinal. The winner of this game will play Eaton tomorrow at 5.30 for the championship. The loser of this game will uh, play Weld Central at 4 o'clock for the uh, third-place honors here in this opening season tournament. The Mustangs trailed by seven at the end of the first quarter, narrowed it to five points, at the halftime, pulled to within three at the end of the third quarter and now trail by two with 419 left to go in the ball game. Mustangs have the possession, throw it in from the near sideline. Bills on the right side near the arc, gets it up high to Petty John. Now Danielle Gross back in the ball game and she's whistled for a traveling. She was guarded closely there by Amanda Carey who forced the turnover. Mustangs will drop back and pick up half court. Trailing now by two with four minutes to go in the ball game. Smith drives into the paint and, let's see, one official called a tie-up and the other official called a foul on Danielle Gross and the foul is going to be called. That is the seventh team foul, so it'll be a one and one. That'll send Smith to the free throw line and that's just about as good as two points. She's only missed once tonight. And that one is perfect. That's somebody who's practiced her free throws. She was 5 for 5 in the first half, and she's 4 of 5 here in the second half with one more to go. And that one is also perfect. What a nice stroke she has from the line. That extends the lead back to 4 for the Grizzlies. Just under 4 minutes to play in regulation. Snyder in front of the Mustang bench, just outside the arc on the right side. She's guarded by Kaylin Smith. Gets it inside to Bills. Turn around too hard. Now I turn around on a follow-up, which we haven't said too many times. Sammy Pettyjohn, and she's fouled. She'll go to the free throw line. That's good to see the Mustangs being aggressive down in the paint and fighting for those rebounds. So Sammy Pettyjohn at the line for the first time tonight, looking for her first point of the night. The Mustangs trail by four. That shot is up and off the back of the rim. She gets to shoot two because she was in the act of shooting. That's the sixth team foul on the Grizzlies, so both teams will be in the bonus from here on out. That one also off the back of the rim, and Bill picks up the rebound off to Win, uh, Wiederspan. Her shot no good. That was a nice look, but the Grizzlies pick up the rebound with three and a half minutes left to go in the ball game. Northridge leading the Fort Morgan girls by four, 33-29. to 29. Smith, a long three-pointer. It hits the bottom of the net, but it doesn't go through the rim. 
far away. That one was well short, but she hit one from that range a few minutes ago. And that's, she's definitely a confident shooter, and she'll take shots from anywhere on the court. So the Mustangs get it across the timeline. That's Danielle Gross. Swings it right side to Bills. Bills wearing that white headband, as are uh, most of her teammates tonight. Left side is Hetty John. That pie is leader span. Now Schneider, top of the key, as we hit the three-minute mark, three minute mark left to go in the ball game. Mustangs trailing by four and a traveling call. Bit of a late whistle, but that was a good call. Sammy Petty John started before she started her dribble, picked up that pivot foot. So a turnover on the Mustangs. They trail by four with 258 left to go. The Mustangs led in the very early going, but just haven't been able to crack that lead again. They've been within one a couple of times, find themselves trailing by four right now. Now the, now the Grizzlies are pulling the ball way away from the uh, three-point arc. looks like they're going to try to milk some clock here. The Mustangs are going to have to come out and pick up. Kicked away by Alexis Bills. So the Grizzlies will get to throw it in. Looks like they're going to try to take the air out of it already with two and a half minutes to go, Braden. Yeah, that's what... Um, Plot Valley tried to do last night, and the Mustangs forced a turnover, so I'd like to see the Mustangs step up and just force a turnover and play tough man-to-man deep. Yeah, we'll see. A, a team can easily lose momentum if they try to do this too early. Now the Mustangs are going to have to come out and pick up. Now the Grizzlies are looking to cut. They get it in the lane, and a foul. Oh, my. What a good offensive play by uh, Lexi Girk. That just she just forced it in. It didn't look like there was any chance for that basket to even get close. But she made it, and she was also fouled in the process by Brooke Wiederspan. And that actually should be a violation, I think. She was standing uh, I was looking down at my scorecard, but she stepped out of the back of the circle that they're going to give her a do-over. She was actually standing back there when she got it, so that's probably why they... Gave her the chance to try again. Her free throw is no good. And the Grizzlies get the loose ball rebound. We're approaching the two-minute mark, and the Mustangs now trailing by six. They need to rally here quickly as they're headed. It's a relatively low-scoring game, so six points is a fairly big hill to climb in this particular ball game. It is a very big hill to climb, but if the Grizzlies oblige by turning it over, the Mustangs, we're about to bring it in, and Coach Kreckemeyer wants a timeout. We're going to keep it here. As the Mustangs trailing by 6, 35 to 29, with a minute 57 left to go. The game tonight brought to you in part by Platte Valley Hearing Center in Fort Morgan at 417 Main Street. You can get your hearing to its very best. The Mustangs need to find a way to uh, get some buckets here in the final two minutes. Now, um, Allie Schneider heated up there in the second in the third quarter. She scored uh, three field goals, including one behind the free throw line. She and Alexis Bills have the only field goals here in the fourth quarter for the Mustangs. Fort Morgan has possession after the timeout. Bills gets it across the timeline, dribbles right hand, now left hand, now switches, and she is called for an offensive foul. I did not see that. I don't know what that was about. It looked like she was just backing in the way they called it, Unless they called it on somebody else. That's, That's her fourth four. personal foul. So that is four on Schneider with a minute 44 to go, and more importantly almost is the turnover. Possessions are precious as the seconds tick off here. Now swatted away from behind by Alexis Bills. They don't call a foul, but the Grizzlies will throw it in from the near sideline. 96 seconds left to go in this ball game, and the Mustangs trailing by six, 35 to 29 to the Northridge Grizzlies. Mustangs have to pick up close now, and Northridge calls timeout. Again, we'll keep it here as it's the 30-second timeout. T.O. Charlie's is a great place to find used cars or trucks, and if you don't see what you want on the lot at T.O. Charlie's, they'll find it for you. They're located 
at 700 West Platte Avenue in Fort Morgan. Northridge leading Fort Morgan 35 to 29, and there's 129 left to go in the ball game. Braden, the uh, Mustangs have got to force some turnovers, get some stops here, and then get some hoops. Yeah, they need help from Allie Snyder. She has to play smart on defense, and then they're going to have to hit a three sometime in this game, whether they get it off of a bucket and a foul. They have to find a way. They have to dig deep and find a way to come back and win this game. She has 15 points in the ball game, but also has four personal fouls. The Grizzlies have the possession. Mustangs picking up aggressively man-to-man, and the Grizzlies are going to make them come out. They're holding it all the way back by the half-court line. Now they penetrate, and a foul on Bill. She tried to grab the ball and took the arm of Emily Dion, and uh, that's the ninth foul on the Mustang. Tenth, sorry about that. And that means it'll be double bonus from here on out the final minute 13 for the Grizzlies. The Mustangs will shoot one and one if they happen to get fouled, and Dion's first shot is good. The Grizzlies have been excellent from the free throw line tonight. They've only missed, on my scorecard, uh, five free throws. And that second one rimming in and out, but the Grizzlies get the rebound, and it's knocked out of bounds. Then by the Mustangs, Grizzlies will get possession. And Braden, that's kind of been a recurring theme tonight, offensive rebounds. It has. It's been a poor job for the Mustangs defensively boxing out. It's, they're too concentrated on stopping one thing and forgetting about the other. The Grizzlies have trouble getting in, but they do. 106 left to go. Smith pulls it all the way out by the timeline. She's guarded aggressively there by Danielle Gross. She dribbles it toward the free throw line and then back out. The Mustangs have to get aggressive. They may have to foul here with 52 seconds left to go, and they do. But the <laughs> one person you don't want to foul is Kaylin Smith, but there's no choice because they're making sure it's in her hands. And that looked like she was, Danielle Gross was blocked into Kaylin Smith by a, a screen that was set up. So that's the uh, third personal foul on Danielle Gross, all of them here in this half. And Smith will be at the free throw line where she is perfect on that one. So Caitlin Smith is um, six for seven this half and now seven for eight, and that extends the lead to nine with 50 seconds to go. Boy, free throws have been the story for the Grizzlies tonight. 45 seconds to go. The Mustangs are going to have to fire up a bunch of three-pointers. Snyder inside the three-point arc over to Gross. Now they're working the perimeter. The Mustangs have to work quicker than this with down by nine. Shot is up and misses everything by Bill. It was partially blocked. It goes out of bounds. Well, maybe it wasn't partially blocked because it's going over to the Grizzlies. 33 seconds left to go in the ball game, and this is actually the biggest lead of the game for either team, a nine-point lead by the Grizzlies. The winner of this game plays for the championship tomorrow against Eaton, the Mustangs trying to trap Smith in the corner. Now a pass down low. It gets free and good by Girk. And that's probably going to be pretty much the ball game. 15 seconds left to go. Girk, her second bucket of the quarter, makes it 40-29. to 29. Biggest lead of the game for either team. Schneider dribbling around, takes about a three-pointer. Off to Bills, who misses the rim. The ball on the floor and a tie-up with two seconds left to go in the game. And that's going to be pretty much it. The arrow favors the Mustangs. They're about to give it to the... They're giving it to Northridge, and now the other official is going to correct it. I thought the only thing was that maybe they had switched the arrow early, but the arrow favors the Mustangs, who trail by 11 with 1.9 seconds left to go here in the ball game. Petty John gets it in. Shot at the buzzer is good. A two-pointer by Danielle Gross. But, and that's uh, still eight points short for the Mustangs as the final score is 40 to 32. The uh, Northridge Grizzlies beat the Fort Morgan Mustangs, and the Grizzlies will now play Eaton tomorrow night for first place. And uh, Fort Morgan will play at 4 o'clock tomorrow for third place against Weld Central. The final score is Northridge 40, Fort Morgan 32. We'll come back to Platte Valley High School and wrap things up after this 
on Morgan County's B106 and B106.com.